It's never good when you open your phone and you go, oh. Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mass Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go look at my favorites from 2022 and talk about them in the context of today, right now in 2023. Are they still my favorites? Do I still think as fondly as I do or did things this year really take them out of the running as products that I'm very interested in? at all. I just felt like this was really appropriate. A lot of people do this. I'm not claiming to be the first person to do this, but this is like very familiar end of the year content. But I don't think I've ever done this because I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to. So just briefly, if you are new to my channel, this is like the bread and butter of what I do on my channel. A lot of people, this is like the only kind of video that you see from them each year reflecting on their makeup purchases. But I do this all the way throughout the year. So if this is the kind of content that really interests you, I would love to have you subscribe. So last year I ranked every product I tried. This year I tried way too much product to do that. So we're, we we did a worst of beauty, which I already posted, and I'm going to also do a best of beauty of 2023. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But I had a, a top 18, which I considered the best last year. That was the final ranking video that I posted. So I just considered those 18 products to be the best. And I have some of them sitting in front of me right now. So I'm gonna go through from 18 to number one. And I think that makes the most sense. So in 18th place last year, I had the Sonia G Lotus Cheek Brush. So this is what this looks like. It's a beautiful blush brush. It's Sonia G, so it's super luxe. This was a limited edition collection, and I don't think you can buy this particular brush from that collection anymore. Occasionally, there's still some lingering around from the Lotus collection, but this was a blush brush that I really fell in love with last year. It's really great for powders. I wouldn't use it with creams just because of the type of bristle that it has, and I can't remember what kind of bristle it has, but Sonia G also has brushes that she has designed specifically for liquids and creams when it comes to blushes. So I, would, I wouldn't personally use it for a liquid blush. I really like this blush brush quite a bit. However, it does have its limitations because it isn't the most dense blush brush that I own, but it is dense. So for a lot of powders, this is really, really great. But for pigmented powders, I kind of avoid using this brush. And I think I found that out this year as I was exploring things. But I also will say this probably, if I re-ranked these 18 products, it probably would stay in 18th place because I just use a lot more creams this year overall. There are big chunks of snow. I, I'm, it's snowing. I still love this brush. I think you would still have to pry it out of my cold dead hands because of how beautiful it is. And I do still use it for powders. Right now, I'm kind of in brush overload when it comes to brushes. Surat, Refer, and BK Beauty all sent me brushes, which if you're new here, I'm working on like a, a big brush video for next year, but that's going to be something that will probably come in the latter half of next year because I want to get my hands in a lot of brush brands and then report back to you about which brushes I think are worth it and which ones I think are not. And I still haven't gotten all the brushes I intend on reviewing yet because I'm trying to slowly bring them in and see which ones fall to the wayside, which ones I pick up the most. So it's kind of just also gotten kicked to the back of the line when it comes to blush brushes because of just, I'm trying so many brushes right now. Anyway, still a very good brush. Don't think you can even buy it anymore. So, but it is pretty. I wish Sonia G would release more brushes in this colorway because it's really, really pretty. <laughs> And I like pretty things. In 17th place last year, I had the Sonia G Soft Cheek Brush. So this brush is very, very loosely packed. And what it does, and what I like to use it for, is with powder highlighter, especially powder highlighters that I find to be too intense, I'll take this brush and I will just sweep it across my, sweep it in the product once and then sweep it on both of my cheeks. And it gives me this really beautiful, soft, ethereal application of highlighter. Because of how large this is, I feel like sometimes with highlighter, I still fall into that, like, I have that very concentrated area on my cheek. It doesn't look super blended. I think because of how wide this is, the way it disperses the product on my cheek looks much more at home. And I love a glowy cheek kind of from oh, my facial hair up to my, my temples. So if it gets a little bit further on my face, but also a great application for this as well is it's called the soft cheek. So where this one kind of fails, if there's a blush that is too pigmented for me, I will also choose this one to apply that blush because it will just apply it really, really easily and beautifully and make it look very, very airbrushed instead of looking really, really pigmented. So I will use this with something like the Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Copper, which is a little bit 
too pigmented for me and it really applies it really beautifully so i still really find this brush very handy of the brushes that i have been trying out right now no highlighter brush has stood the test to this so this is still winning in my opinion in 16th place i had the merit great skin which i no longer have in my makeup collection it doesn't it's not here anymore i gave it to khaki and then i don't know what happened with it i don't know what khaki decided to do with it if you don't know what it is i'll pop a picture of it up here and what was interesting about that product is it came into my life right around the same time the ritual defeat thorn oil those two products came into my life around the same time and they are kind of like the same idea <laughs> they're both facial oils so the merit great skin I really liked and the thing that I liked about it more than the thorn oil is that it had a pump. My favorite way to use it was as a primer, especially a primer for foundations that I felt did not want to spread on my face as much as other foundations. So the Merit Complexion Stick was also a very good product to use in tandem with that. But also if my skin was feeling like particularly dry, if I had like a lot of dry patches, that was something that I would reach for. I still think it's a good product, but I also have two thorn oils and I like the thorn oil a little bit better. I'm going to pick the thorn oil over the Merit Great Skin. However, if if you were interested in buying the thorn oil but didn't want to spend the 70 some odd dollars that it costs for the thorn oil because that is a very expensive product from Ritual Defeat, I would say the Great Skin is a, a comparable product. And I believe it's like in the $30, $34 price range. So I would probably go for that over the thorn oil. If I run out of the thorn oil, which I'm going through very slowly, these are types of products that I don't run through very quickly because I have oily skin. So I don't always like need that kind of thing. And, but like as we're heading into winter, I'm finding myself reaching for the thorn oil in skincare a little bit more. I would probably choose to buy the Merit Great Skin again over buying the thorn oil just because of cost effectiveness. But I think they're very beautiful products. And if you can buy the thorn oil on a deal, like if they ever put that in the 21 Days of Beauty, it's worth grabbing to check out. But I can also understand and appreciate not wanting to splurge on a $75 product. So this one's kind of funny. I had the Ritual Defee three drop foundation in uh, in my top 15. It was number 15. Not this year's three drop foundation, the lab sample release that came out last year. I really, really liked it. And it was something that had to grow on me. If you go back and watch my review of that version, not the new version, because there are two, I have two Ritual Defeat three drop foundation reviews. The lab sample release, I didn't quite understand what was happening. And then what happened was over time, I kept reaching for that foundation. And then I realized that I really, really liked it. And then I realized I probably was never going to get to have it again. And then Ritual Defeat released their new iteration of the three drop foundation. And I like, don't like that one. <laughs> I don't like that one. And I don't think it would have grown on me because the thing about the three drop foundation, the original, the lab sample three drop foundation was that it blurred the skin. It was such a slight difference in the skin. When I first put it on, I was like, I don't know what happened. And then when I watched the footage back, it looked like I put a filter on my face. And that's the kind of shit that I love. <laughs> I don't want my skin to not look like skin. I want it to look a little bit perfected, not covered up, just like enhanced. And that's what that product did. And the new product, the new Ritual Defeat three drop foundation is just kind of coverage based and did not sit on my skin and not did not become one with my skin. So like the I just, I don't like the new one at all. I miss the old one. I know I'm never going to have it again. It's okay. I think that was a good spot for it because it was one of those, it was one of those growers over the year where it was like, I don't really know about this. And then as time progressed, I realized more and more how valuable I found that product. And then, and then it went away forever. Next was the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. And I would not rank that very highly at all anymore. Here is my experience. The first tube I had of the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara, the tube Tarte Tubing Mascara, was perfect. It was gorgeous. It was stunning. I don't think it behaved like a tubing mascara, but I also feel like a lot of things I've tried that are tubing mascaras did not come off in tubes, except with like a couple of exceptions. And I don't know if that's a possibility. Like, I don't know if you can have a tubing mascara that doesn't come off like that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a scientist and I never have been and I've never claimed to be. So it didn't come off in tubes, but it was really easy to take off. It was like a very easy formula to get off the skin, which is perfect. And that's like the whole point of a tubing mascara. But I have tried some other tubing mascaras. Specifically, I'm thinking of the Blink. And the Blink mascara was really pretty and it made my lashes look really good, but it didn't really like do much volumizing or like very much lengthening. It was like, your eyelashes are more visible you're welcome. And I love a little bit of drama with my mascara because I'm not willing to put on false lashes, but I do 
like the idea of the drama of a false lash. And so what I feel like this product did, that other tubing mascaras I've tried haven't been able to do, that gave me the drama. My first tube went perfectly, like really looked great for three months. And then in the summertime, I bought it again and it started flaking on me and like was like, it felt like a completely different product than the first time I tried it, which is a bit of a bummer because the one thing about my other favorite mascara, which we'll talk about literally in a moment, is that that one really gets transfery on me in the summertime. Like if it's, if I'm sweaty outside, like if I'm outside, it, it does, I don't have to be like that sweaty. If there's humidity in the air and my eyelashes touch my lid, like I get transfer. And so that's what's great about tubing mascara is like they won't do that. But then this one got flaky on me all of a sudden. It was not great. So I actually take it back. I don't recommend that product anymore. So I don't know. I don't know if I got a dud second one because I've recommended that product to people personally and they all really enjoy it and don't have that issue. So I don't know, maybe the quality of my lashes, like the hair of my lashes changed a bit between last winter and then the summer. Or maybe it was because of the different temperatures in the different environment because it was like it wasn't the dry winter when I was using it. I was using it in the summertime. But you would think something would become drier and flakier in the winter. All that to be said, I can't answer more questions about it. It just didn't work for me. In 13th place, I had the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. And I still have, I, this is not the same bottle, but I still use this one. I am retiring it, and but I do think that this deserves its ranking because I just love the way it makes my lashes look. That it's like, if you like Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, this is like the adult real version of what I think that mascara is going for. It's really, really beautiful. It's really, really lovely. However, as I said, in the summertime, this transfers all over my list. It transfers up because my lashes become so long that they hit the top of my, like where my eyebrow would be if I had my eyebrows. And it just leaves little black dots all the way across. So it's not a perfect formula for me anymore. And I have moved on to bigger and better things when it's come to mascara. And I would recommend the Surat Releve mascara over this mascara, but I still really like this. I would never be sad if someone gave this to me. <laughs> like, if someone was like, Tom, I'm gifting you a mascara, and they handed it to me, I'd be like, oh, beautiful, wonderful, thank you so much for gifting me that mascara. And I would just save it for the winter time when I'm a little bit less sweaty, and that would be what I would use it. I wouldn't open it until the winter time. I think that the Releve mascara is going to be good for me all year. I'm really tired of trying mascaras and then them failing me at some point. In 12th place, I had the Chanel Healthy Glow Bronzer in... Soleil Tan Deep, which is the shade I have. And I still have this product and I actually am wearing it today. So mine has a bunch of, whenever I shave facial hair and I put bronzer on my face, it's just, it's just like facial hair. It's, the nature of a cream product is you're going to get something in it that's not cute, which is like probably why we shouldn't share them. I definitely did not use this bronzer as much this year as I did last year. What happened over the course of last year is when I started the year, I was like warm tones, warm tones, warm tones, warm tones, warm tones. And today I did a warm toned look. In fact, I was when I was thinking about doing my makeup for today's video, I was like, I want to do a warm toned look. I just feel like I haven't done a warm toned look in a very long time. So I shifted to like being more into cool tones, like halfway through the year. So this is really, really warm and it is dark, but the red, I like the red better than like an orange. And I'm not always reaching for this. You know, I'm not always reaching for this kind of bronzer, especially when I'm not wearing orange blush and like orange eyeshadow, orange and green eyeshadow, <laughs> like, which is like very much how I started last year. But I still think this is a really beautiful formula. I, I do think though, because I have a shade that's not meant for my skin tone, that I have to be very careful in the way in which I apply it. And I actually have a brush that I acquired this year, which is the um, <laughs> BK105 brush. And that with this product is just the perfect applicator because this looks really, it, this is actually really fluffy. I feel like it looks dense. And when I tap it in there and get a little bit of product and I tap it on my face, it's not a very strong bronze. I, I mean, I know I have the swatch and then I have it tapped in around it. But yeah, that's how I did it today. I used this and I tapped it in there, tapped it in. So it's not something that can't work for my skin tone. It's just a little more fussier than some of the bronzers I tried this year. I really like this product. I really do. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't decluttered my... I have started decluttering things, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. But I haven't gotten to my bronzer drawer. And the bronzers are one that I'm trying to be like a little more vicious with this year. But I don't know that I wanted to part ways with this. I feel like... I don't know. I love it. Like if I were to rank all of my bronzers, I don't think it would rank very high. 
I wish there were more shades of this. One, this shouldn't be the deepest shade. This, the one that I'm wearing should not be the deepest shade. I wish that Chanel would play with some undertones in, in all kinds of levels, which is like what we're asking for from every brand whenever they release bronzers. It's like, could you please? Barbara, please. Yeah, it's still very much like the product. Don't feel about it this year the way I felt about it last year, that's for sure. In 11th place is a product that I, spoiler alert, will be decluttering in my declutter series. So I've already filmed some of my declutter. I film it in segments and I edit in segments and then I put it together for one big long video for you. So I've already decluttered this product and it was the Rowan 1111 quad. Now I will save why I decluttered it for the declutter video and I talk about it there. But I really still like the Rowan quad. I even in the video, you'll see me like kind of go back and forth on whether or not I feel like I should declutter it. Those are really, really cool, pretty, lived in, sexy kind of eyeshadows, but are like the easiest thing to apply. So, so cool. They kind of have been outranked this year by some other things. And I think they started getting outranked at the end of last year, but I just didn't know that yet because I bought a product in December of last year that I think is very similar to what Rowan offers, but performs better for me on my eyes. But the Rowan Quad, what I every, I love, I still love everything about the Rowan Quads. Like I like how small they are. I like how compact they are. It gives girl on the go energy just to have that little compact and to be able to go boop, boop, boop. And then like you're ready for a night out or like ready for the day. They're really great. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. But obviously if I decluttered it, it means that it no longer really holds a special place in my heart or as special of a place in my heart. I really didn't reach for them much this year at all. And that's probably for a number of reasons because I was testing a lot more things that I got in PR, testing a lot more things that I bought for review, got a things I was more excited about than the Rowan quads and they fell to the wayside. They are really great for like whenever I was like running to meet up with friends and I just wanted to throw something on my face. Like they were really great for that. But again, I have products that can do that for me now even better. Now we're in the top 10 of what I ranked last year. In 10th place was Givenchy's Sheer Velvet Lipstick in the shade Brick or Brick Flamboyant. Depending on where you would look at it, it had a couple of different names, which the brand describes as a brick red. And it is, in fact, a beautiful matte orange. I still think that this is one of my favorite lipstick formulas. And I think that this shade is a1 premiere, like the one of the most beautiful shades. Now, this was a limited edition shade. It was from, I think it was the, either their fall collection, but it had this interesting like baby pink packaging. And But I, you can still buy it on their website. Or last time I checked, you could still buy it on the Givenchy website. This formula is one of like, the most comfortable mattes. And it is sheer, but it looks, oh uh, man. It's just like, actually, I don't even know. It's like anything anything you've ever wanted a matte lipstick to be, like if you're not into liquid lipsticks and you're okay with like reapplying, then this is the matte kind of lipstick formula that is going to be something that I think really works for you. It's really elegant. I feel like the formula is really forgiving on the lips. It's, it's one of those products that I feel like swatches poorly, but performs really well where it's supposed to perform. I don't use it that often. But I do still think of it in very, very high regard. It's a color thing. I, I went from wearing a lot of stuff that this would go with uh, to not wearing a lot of stuff that this would go with. And it was really funny. After I applied my lip product today, I when I pulled this out, I was like, I could have worn that. And I wish I would have worn it. You know, I could have changed my lip product, but... I'm far too lazy for that. In ninth place, I had the Bare Minerals Blonzer, and I have the shade Kiss of Copper. I also have the shade Kiss of Pink, which I'm not sure if I had by the end of last year, but I have acquired that since. And if you're not familiar with the Blonzers, they're some of the best blushes. They just really are. To the, We come to a head here where it's like, I don't wear a lot of looks that require this, but I do actually have it on my cheeks today. I have a very, very like light application of it on my cheeks today. What's really great about this is that it's really kind of shiny and it, it can be your only cheek product. However, in my opinion, you're still going to need a bronzer, but you probably don't need a highlight. Kiss of Pink is much easier for me to use. Kiss of Copper, I have to baby a little bit more, but I'm okay with it because I like the way it looks. It's a really, really beautiful orange blush. And I think the fact that they are like bronzers where like that bronzer is in there. I find that this orange is a little more nuanced than some other oranges in the major market. 
And I really, really appreciate that about it. And it is really gorgeous. This is really stunning. I wish that there were more shades in the Bare Minerals Blonzers, to be quite honest with you. And I know they released two more shades this year. I feel like that none of them are like so super nuanced that that's what I'm reaching for. Because I feel like a lot of the blushes that I have fallen in love with this year are blushes where the shade is just perfect. And it's not like, sometimes it's a shade that you can't quite put your finger on. And that's what I've been really into more recently rather than something as bold as this. I also feel like I've just been wearing less blush in general, meaning how much I apply. So like I, my, my looks have not been very blush focused this year. And I don't know that I was doing it so much last year, but I do think I wore more blush last year. I did a lot of blush draping at one point. So having pigmented blushes like this was really helpful in achieving some depth on my face and something like this, where I can really change how the shade looks depending on how I apply it. It's really great for that. And perhaps I should do a blush draping look. I have I haven't done one in since I got khakis blushes this summer. So it's it's been a while. So maybe we're due. Maybe me and that product should revisit. In eighth place is the Phytosurgent Skin Spark in the shade Smolder. And so I think important context for what I'm about to say here is that this was my first one. So there's a thick swatch of it. So we have a thick swatch here and then it blended out over here. I stand by that this is the best cream blush formula. However, my feelings on this particular shade have changed and it's kind of par for the course. So if there's one thing about makeup is that your taste in it is ever evolving. If you don't watch Lauren My Beauty, Lauren actually talks about this quite a bit, especially in her declutter series that she does on her channel. If you look at the shades that I'm showing you of what I bought last year, this is a lot different than what you've been seeing me wear more recently. And so if you're new to my channel and you're seeing all of these like intense pigmented oranges, you're like, what? Who is the person who wore that? Because it's certainly not the person sitting in front of me. I just haven't been as into like the oranges of it all this year as I was last year. And unfortunately, Smolder is just not my favorite shade of the Skin Spark blushes. It's not the first one I think of. And if I think of an orange blush, I do typically reach for a kiss of copper before I end up reaching for this one. So I think it's just a matter of my taste changing, why I'm not loving on this one in particular. And in fact, I, like, I'm not sure that this particular shade will even survive my declutter because I just, I just wear it so rarely. In seventh place, I had the Merit lipstick in the shade 1990. I have some good progress on it. I feel like of the products that I have shown you so far in today's video, this has been the one I've worn the most consistently. It's a very neutral brown. The thing about these lipsticks is they kind of feel very like chapsticky. What I really like about them is that they feel nourishing. They make my lips look really cool. But then they're not really like fussy and then I don't worry about how they're going to wear off as the day progresses because it's not super pigmented when it goes on. So it's not like something that I feel like I have to baby. And you know, when you eat and stuff, it either comes off entirely or like wears off beautifully. And it's just like, it's a very fuss free formula. Now I have gotten into some other formulas that I like better this year. I feel thinking squarely about the YSL candy glazes. This feels more satiny. The candy glazes are shiny. Like they're very shiny. And I do feel like this leaves a nice sheen on the lips whenever I use it. But the candy glaze is like one step ahead. Now I don't think the formulas are so exactly the same that one couldn't warrant having both in their collection. And I still really love the compact of this. You know, it's like still like Merit 1990 lives in my brain rent free. And it went okay with my warmer phase last year, but it also really works in my cool tone phase because it's, it does feel neutral to me. I've heard people describe it as a cool tone brown. That's not been my experience with it. Like it works with cool toned looks, but I don't think there's like a lot of gray or purple in this. It feels very like right down the middle to me. Anyway, I think it's a really beautiful shade. This one was sent to me in PR, I'm fairly certain. I did buy the other, I bought another shade I think called Slip and I didn't like that one as much. And I felt like that one, that one moved around the bullet and it looked like I chewed on it, like it was like an eraser. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was something. Merit 1990 feels like something I would always have in my collection, even if like when I finish it, but it's gonna take me forever to finish a lipstick, but I really, really still like it. The Sonia G Jumbo Bronzer Brush came in 
sixth place. So there's a close-up look at it. It's a very big brush. I bought this because I was looking into buying the Tom Ford brush, but then I realized the Sonia G one is actually cheaper and it launched right around the time I was looking for it. This remains my favorite brush to apply bronzer. I've gotten a few bronzer brushes in PR recently, and this one's still the goat. This one's still the greatest of all time, in my opinion. It is the perfect bronzer brush. Now, it might look really big and scary to you, but when you flip it sideways, it's a little, you know, it's a little less scary. I just tap it into my bronzer and I apply it on my face and it applies it so, so beautifully. Obviously, this is meant for powders. And I was such on a cream bronzer kick last year with this, I felt like I was barely using my powder bronzers. And then when I bought this, it just made me want to use my powder bronzers so much more. And I was using an hourglass brush, which hourglass brushes are really nice, but it was one of the dual ended ones. And I hated that. So I bought this to replace that brush and I've never looked back. And honestly, if I'm looking at the lineup here, this would probably be ranked in second place if I like were to re-rank them, which I'm not going to do because I don't feel like it. <laughs> but it's a very very, very good product. I still reach for it all of the time. And that's what's beautiful about brushes is that they're kind of timeless. If it's a really good brush, it's gonna be like, yes, I do use that all the time. In fifth place, I have the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks in the shade Mimi. And I almost said pop it. If you were here, you know. And so this is a very warm beige. And not to beat a dead horse, but there was this whole thing where I was trying to find a dead pink shade. And in the imagery on West Atelier's website, which this was site exclusive at the time, I don't know if it's still site exclusive. It looks like a gray pink on their website, but it, it definitely has warmth to it. There it is blended out. I use this shade so much more than I was using the shade Pop It, which I have since decluttered, which was like their bright, bright, hot pink shade. This is really where it's at. However, <laughs> I do feel as though I haven't reached for Mimi nearly as much this year as I did last year. And I don't know what it is, because I think Mimi kicked off my intrigue into some like very nuanced blushes, and it's, it's not the last one we'll talk about even in this video. But I feel like I've been playing with so many other blushes. What I'm hoping with my declutter this year is that my blush drawer becomes much more focused, my bronzers become much more focused, my highlighters become much more focused, because I feel like this is still one of my favorite blushes that I own, and I feel like I overlooked it because I, I have a little bit of like a choice fatigue in my makeup collection, which I hate, <laughs> which I really don't love. So I feel like this did not get the love it deserves this year, but I'm hoping that we can fall back in love with each other. It's not that I even fall out, I love this component, the other thing is, I, I if it's not, it's in my drawer with all my other blushes, but I don't perceive it as a compact. And so when I'm looking in there for a blush, my brain is looking for a compact, not a stick, which is why I think it often gets overlooked. There are a couple other products that I have like that, where it's like, it's not shaped the same way as all of the other ones. So when I look in my drawer and I don't see compact. It's like, okay, I'm just looking at compacts. I'm not looking at the round things. I don't know if anyone else's brain works like that, but mine sure does. But I think out of the selection of the products that I have in front of me, Mimi would still rank very highly. In fourth place, I have the Kira Weiss Inner Glow Blush. Look at that. There's this, this has been very loved since I bought it and continued throughout this year. I feel like I use this a lot more in the first half of the year. What's weird about this product is it's a blush and it's a, I would call it for people with my skin tone, fair skin tone. It's like a, just, it's a, it's a je ne sais quoi on your cheek. <laughs> it has like a beige and kind of like a warmer beige base. And then it has a silver sheen on it. And what, like, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean? And you might think in your brain, like, that doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't. And then you look at it and you're like, but it does. This is the most versatile blush I have. It doesn't really matter what kind of look I'm doing. If I just like don't know what blush to use, Inner Glow is where I reach. It is like, it's like, okay, I've done something with my eyes that I'm not really sure about what it will look like, like what my cheek should be, because it's enough and not too much all at the same time, but still being very interesting, but not being the star of the show, but could be the star of the show. So yeah, I, I still very much love this blush. Again, kind of like with Mimi, I've had an overload of choices when it comes to blushes. I feel like, you know, my declutter is going to really help me out. Hopefully, fingers crossed. 
In third place was another Sonia G brush. It is the Sonia, Sonia G. <laughs> it's the Sonia G Jumbo Base. I have, do, 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 where's my other one? I have two. Because I like it that much. And if I'm trying a foundation for the first time, I'm reaching for these brushes because I love the way they apply it. Now, there are some foundations I have found other brushes to be better for, but I always start here. They're very densely packed, but they still apply light coverage foundations very, very beautifully. Typically, the rule of thumb when it comes to brushes is the more densely packed of a foundation brush you have, like the more it's going to be better for a full coverage application. And as you may or may not know, I like to wear foundations that have lighter coverage and they work really, really beautifully for that. Now, there is like a myth that these are like very, very large. I'm going to show it to you up against the Jumbo Bronzer. It's much smaller than the Jumbo Bronzer, but in my brain, these BK foundation brushes are just like, they're much bigger. They're different shapes, but sort of the same, where they have like that rounded padding. But yeah, I, I wouldn't trade these brushes for the world. I'm glad I have two. I have been trying some other foundation brushes I've been really enjoying, but this will always be the baseline. Like it has to be as good as this if I'm keeping it around because these brushes, just the way they apply foundation is so beautiful. I, I never have that issue with them leaving streaks on my face because of the way they're shaped and how much they have in the ferrule, like how densely packed they are. Oh man, it's kind of like if it's if you were going to apply foundation with like this part of your hand, <laughs> like that's what it kind of feels like whenever you're applying it. Foundation. Star Stars of the show would probably be my number one now out of all of these products because boy, do I use these all of the time. They're just such a high use of them. Like they've, they're expensive brushes and they have absolutely paid for themselves over and over again already. And I've had them for a year and a half. I don't remember when I bought them the, last year, but I, I certainly use them almost every time I do my makeup. All right, now we're in the top two, which will be pretty interesting. In second place, I had the Isamea Industrial Palette. We've been on a journey. Now, I still really love this eyeshadow palette. You can see that I have some pretty good dips going in some of the shades here. The brand is Avea. It's just not what I want it to be. Just like Pat McGrath is not the brand I want it to be. I think Isamea could be a really cool brand, but they got a little chuggy for me. And I know that chuggy is not a word that the youths say anymore, but like, that's the word that I want to use to describe. Like, it's like, they're trying so hard to be cool. They leave me feeling like they're very uncool because they're like overcompensating. The problem is that I like their formulas. <laughs> like, I really, really like these. And a lot of people say that they like the new one, the new one with the new formulations better. There's something about this like thick, interesting, weird textural experience about using all of these and the idea that like these are better applied with your fingers and like just kind of like finger painting on your eyes and still getting a very intense look still very appealing to me now i do think that this color story lends itself more to what i was into last year you can see the greens and like the the, the reds and the grunginess of this all and i still love a grunge look a grungy look you know or like you that kind of smeared kind of feeling with that kind of texture. I still really like that. It's just like my feelings on the brand deter me from using this, but I still really like this. Every time I use it, I go, I should use that more. It's just a shame that like my perception of the brand has like affected how I feel about using the product. And in first place last year, I had the Auric Glow Lust and I have the shade Morganite. Still very much love this product. I really heavily use it the first part of the year. And then I didn't really use it in the summertime, which that doesn't make any sense. I feel like if anything, I should have been slathering my face in this all summer. And then I really came back around to it at the end of the year. And I never disliked it. But this lives in my primer drawer. And, and whenever I'm thinking of highlight, it's not in the highlight drawer. So it's like hard for me to remember sometimes. But what I've been doing with it recently is even if I don't want to use it as my highlight, but I really want a glowy look, I take it and I apply it just like from my eye all the way down to where I would normally apply highlighter and kind of all in the places where I would, you know, brush, bronze, or highlight, you know, brush, bronze, or highlight. It's in that area. I just like prime that area with this and then 
I put all of the other stuff that I'm using over it and then it just leaves my cheek very, very glowy. I don't use it so much as a primer anymore. I have certainly done that in the past. I really like the way it looked. But I've been really liking this new application. It feels a little more elevated from the way I was initially using it. But if I had to pick my favorite liquid highlighter, this would still be it. I just feel like this year, it's not like I've been using highlighter any less. I still use it. I know that like highlighter is falling out of favor. I still like having a sheen on my cheek. I still like that. I haven't been excited about new highlighter this year. So I, I don't think that I'm like a highlighter person as much as I was last year. If you are into highlight, I recommend Laura May Beauty. She is still out here fighting the good fight for highlighter. I feel like I'm taking a step back from highlighter, but I don't, I still use it every time I do my makeup for the most part. So I, if I've forgotten a couple times. Also, if I do use this as a glowy base, sometimes I won't put highlighter on top and sometimes I will apply either more of this or another highlighter. It's still a tried and true product. I really, you know, I know Auric is a small brand. I, I can't wait to see what they do next. I don't know if they have any other products in development, but I'm excited to see what else they do. Looking at all of this, I'm really happy to see that I still have a high use value for a lot of these. I am a little bit sad about some of my favorites falling off, but all that means is that I have found something that's comparable or better to take its place, which is good. However, what I will say is that kind of also reflecting on what I just said is you shouldn't be always chasing the new thing for the new high to, to replace the old thing. If you have something and you love it, keep on using it. You don't need to replace it or try to find a better version of it unless it's not performing for you anymore or you're finding issues with it that you think that you might be able to solve with another formula. I just want to say that because I have definitely fallen into the habit of like chasing for the best version of things whenever I have stuff that I would love to finish up or like use more and then I have like two of a thing that's really similar and I still like both of them but I just like one a little bit more. So this is the end of the video but if you are new to my channel and you haven't caught the vibe my channel is very much about loving my makeup collection as it is currently first and foremost and I'm trying to help myself and help you build the habit of being more discerning about what we purchase. Now, I do sometimes buy things explicitly for review, and I also do sometimes get PR. That's not something that's normal. You know, like, I know that you wouldn't do that, and I think that's something to keep in mind as you watch my content. But I try to be very explicit about when I get something or how whenever I purchase something, whether it was something because I was interested in it or, you know, as a general review. And I, so I would love to have you subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. If not, Thank you for watching this video all the way through. I really appreciate it. I'm on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. It's patreon.com slash hope mess Tom. Over there, I do my podcast with my friend Kaki of Kaki Reviews Beauty. And that releases every Tuesday. I also do additional content. I try to do at least one video a month. Additional, some most sometimes I do two, and it depends on what I have time for because my time is limited these days. And make sure you like this video, share it with someone if you think they would get value out of it. Anyway, remember to follow your hope and you'll find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye!